Ladies and gentlemen, if you enjoy my video, please click the like button and share the video. It is the only way the YouTube algorithms really notices me. I will be very grateful to you. The eerie discovery that will leave you breathless. Scary story published by Scare Fiction. Read for you by Scare Fiction. Chapter 1. The Call of the Desert. The midday sun beat down on Dr. Amelia Vance's rental car, turning the desolate highway into a shimmering mirage. Dust devils danced on the horizon, mocking mirages of shimmering oases that vanished with a sigh of wind. Amelia squinted through the windshield, her designer sunglasses offering little protection from the relentless glare. Sweat beaded on her forehead, a stark contrast to the bone-dry air that clawed at her throat. This wasn't exactly the glamorous archaeological expedition she'd envisioned. A crumpled letter lay on the passenger seat, the cheap paper already buckling under the relentless heat. It was the reason she found herself in this desolate wasteland, a far cry from the polished halls of academia. The letter, scrawled in a shaky hand, spoke of an unearthed relic of unimaginable significance. It was signed simply J. S. Offering no further information. Intrigue had initially warred with skepticism. Unearthing relics of unimaginable significance wasn't exactly unheard of in Amelia's field, but it usually involved well-funded digs in established archaeological hotspots, not cryptic letters from the middle of nowhere. Yet, something about the urgency in the words, the sheer desperation that bled through the ink, had snagged at her curiosity. So, here she was, Amelia Vance, renowned anthropologist, trading tweed jackets for a sun-bleached linen shirt and her usual sensible shoes for a pair of dusty hiking boots. The town, if you could call it that, materialized on the horizon like a mirage that refused to vanish. A cluster of weathered buildings huddled together, their paint peeling like sunburnt skin. A single gas station, its pumps more rust than metal, stood sentinel at the town's entrance. A faded sign proclaimed it, Desolation dooms your last oasis. Amelia snorted, not exactly a welcoming motto. She parked the car, the heat radiating off the asphalt like a furnace. The silence was heavy, broken only by the rasping wind and the distant cry of a lone crow. As she stepped out, the dry air scraped at her lungs. Squinting, she surveyed the deserted main street. Tumbleweeds bounced past like tumbleweeds possessed, the only sign of life. A flicker of movement caught her eye. A man stood in the doorway of the dusty saloon, his weathered face hidden beneath a Stetson hat. He observed her with a silent intensity that sent shivers down Amelia's spine. He wore a worn sheriff's badge pinned to his denim jacket, the only hint of authority in this desolate outpost. Taking a deep breath, Amelia straightened her shoulders and marched towards the saloon. The swinging doors creaked open with a groan revealing a dimly lit interior that smelled of stale beer and something distinctly unpleasant. A handful of men sat hunched over glasses, their faces etched with the kind of lines carved by a harsh life and even harsher secrets. All eyes turned towards her. The sheriff pushed himself away from the bar and ambled towards her, his boots crunching on the dusty floorboards. He was a tall man, broad-shouldered, with a weathered face that seemed permanently creased into a frown. His eyes, the color of faded denim, held a weariness that spoke of countless battles fought under the unforgiving desert sun. You must be Dr. Vance, he said, his voice a low rumble. Amelia offered a tight smile. That's me, Sheriff. Walker, he supplied, his gaze unwavering. Welcome to Desolation Dunes. What brings a city slicker like you out here? Amelia hesitated. The cryptic letter felt suddenly flimsy in the face of this man's scrutiny. But there was no turning back now. Taking another deep breath, she explained the reason for her visit, 
her voice echoing in the cavernous silence of the saloon. As she spoke, the sheriff's gaze grew even more intense. When she finished, a long silence stretched between them, broken only by the clinking of glasses from the other patrons. Finally, the sheriff spoke, his voice laced with a quiet warning. This ain't no museum, Doc. Things get unsettled out here. You might be better off heading back where you came from. Amelia met his gaze, a spark of defiance flickering in her eyes. I appreciate the concern, Sheriff, but I don't scare easily. Besides, a relic of unimaginable significance doesn't exactly scream abandoned mission, now does it? The Sheriff snorted, a humorless sound. Suit yourself, Doc. Just remember, you were warned. Amelia straightened her back, a newfound determination settling in her gut. This town might be a desolate wasteland, but the whispers of a relic of unimaginable significance were a siren song she couldn't ignore. Whatever secrets desolation dooms held, she was determined to unearth them. Chapter 2 Whispers and Shadows Sheriff Walker's words hung heavy in the air, a stark warning against the backdrop of desolation dunes, stifling silence. Amelia forced a smile, thanking him for the offer of a room at Dusty Inn across the street. As she stepped back out into the unrelenting heat, a prickling sensation danced on the back of her neck, a feeling of unseen eyes following her every move. The inn, much like the rest of the town, was a testament to weathered charm. Its peeling paint and creaking floorboards held a certain frontier-esque appeal, but the thin mattress and threadbare sheets did little to soothe Amelia's racing thoughts. Sleep came fitfully, plagued by vivid dreams of swirling shadows and whispers in a language she couldn't understand. She woke with a gasp, bathed in a cold sweat, the oppressive silence of the room amplifying the pounding of her heart. Disoriented, she glanced around the dimly lit room. A single candle sputtered on the bedside table, casting grotesque shadows on the peeling wallpaper. Determined to shake off the unsettling visions, Amelia rose and ventured out into the pre-dawn light. The air was crisp and cool, a welcome respite from the relentless heat of the day. The deserted town held a different air in the morning light, a sense of secrets buried beneath its weathered exterior. Her first stop was the town library, a small, dusty building crammed with more cobwebs than books. The librarian, a kindly woman with eyes that held the weary wisdom of the desert, greeted her with a hint of surprise. Don't get many visitors these days, she said, her voice as dry as the surrounding air. Amelia explained her interest in the town's history, specifically anything related to recent archaeological finds. The librarian's smile faltered. There haven't been any digs in these parts for as long as I can remember, she said, her voice dropping to a low whisper. Some things are best left undisturbed, Miss Vance. Intrigued, Amelia pressed on, but the librarian remained tight-lipped. Frustration gnawed at her, these locals seemed to be hiding something, a secret buried deeper than the town's dusty streets. As the day wore on, Amelia felt an unnerving sense of unease settle upon her. Townsfolk she encountered on the deserted streets seemed wary, their glances fleeting and filled with a strange mixture of fear and hostility. A group of children playing near the dilapidated town well stopped their chatter and scurried away as she approached. The afternoon sun beat down mercilessly. As she passed the saloon, a lone figure emerged from the darkened interior. It was the sheriff, his face creased with worry. He stopped beside her, his voice low. You haven't been asking around much, have you, Doc? He said. Amelia's heart hammered in her chest. Just trying to get a feel for the place, she stammered. He shook his head. There are places in this desert, Doc, that are better left undisturbed. Places where the past can reach out and grab you if you're not careful. 
His words sent a shiver down her spine. Was this just small town superstition, or was there a kernel of truth to his warnings? Back in her room that night, another unsettling premonition plagued her sleep. This time, the shadows whispered a chilling name, the Whispering Sands. The name lingered on her waking mind, a strange pull tugging at her curiosity. Ignoring the gnawing unease, Amelia knew she couldn't leave Desolation Dunes empty-handed. The whispers of a relic of unimaginable significance were too strong to ignore. But as the flickering candle cast dancing shadows on the room's cracked walls, a sense of foreboding washed over her. This town held secrets, and she had a feeling she was just beginning to unearth them, with each step leading her deeper into the heart of its chilling mysteries. Chapter 3 Unearthing the Eerie The unsettling whispers of the whispering sands echoed in Amelia's mind long after she woke from her haunted sleep. Armed with a growing determination, and a gnawing sense of unease, she decided to confront the sheriff. He listened with a grim expression as she recounted her dream and the librarian's veiled warnings. The whispering sands, he muttered, his voice heavy with a weariness that went beyond years under the harsh desert sun. That's not a place we talk about much. Despite his reluctance, the sheriff eventually relented, producing a faded map from a dusty drawer. Its edges were worn, and the ink had bled with age, but it depicted a desolate stretch of desert far from the town, marked with a single ominous red X. This map belonged to my grandfather, the sheriff said, his gaze fixed on the worn paper. He was obsessed with something out there, some secret buried beneath the sand. He never found it, and neither did anyone else. Amelia traced the red X with a trembling finger. This was it. The key to the relic. The heart of the town's hidden past. Ignoring the sheriff's muttered warnings about the dangers that lurked beyond the town's borders, she packed her essentials, a strange sense of anticipation tingling beneath her apprehension. The drive into the heart of the desert was a solitary one. The desolate landscape stretched out on either side of the dusty road, an endless vista of parched earth and bleached vegetation. The air shimmered with heat, distorting the horizon into a shimmering mirage. Following the cryptic map, Amelia eventually veered off the road, the tires crunching on loose gravel. The sun beat down like a merciless hammer, and the silence was broken only by the relentless whine of the wind. After hours of driving, the faint outline of jagged cliffs materialized in the distance. The map indicated the burial site lay nestled within their embrace. Parking the car, Amelia felt a sudden drop in temperature as she stepped into the shadow of the cliffs. The air hung heavy with an oppressive silence, broken only by the rasping wind whipping through the canyons. Following the map's instructions, she scrambled over loose rocks and navigated treacherous slopes, until finally she emerged into a hidden clearing bathed in an eerie twilight. There, nestled between towering rock formations, lay a sight that sent chills down her spine. A circle of weathered stones, their surfaces worn smooth by countless years, surrounded a shallow depression in the sand. In the center, partially obscured by drifting sand, lay a dark, obsidiana disk. Its surface was smooth and cool to the touch, etched with intricate symbols that seemed to writhe and twist in the fading light. As Amelia reached out to brush away the sand, a primal fear gripped her. This artifact held a power she could sense, a dark energy that pulsed beneath its surface. But her curiosity, her relentless pursuit of knowledge, overrode her fear. She lifted the obsidian disc, its cold weight sending a tremor through her hand. The moment her fingers brushed the symbols, a jolt of energy surged through her. Images flooded her mind, a scene of horrifying brutality, screams echoing through the canyons, and a ritualistic sacrifice offered to an unseen 
entity. Nausea rose in her throat as the vision subsided, leaving her trembling and shaken. Amelia stumbled back, the disc slipping from her grasp and clattering onto the sand. The world around her seemed to shimmer, the air crackling with an unseen energy. A sudden gust of wind whipped through the clearing, carrying with it the chilling whisper of voices, the same guttural language from her dream. The hairs on the back of her neck stood on end. This wasn't just an artifact. It was a conduit, a gateway to something dark and ancient that slumbered beneath the desert sands. With a sinking feeling in her gut, Amelia realized her quest for knowledge had just taken a terrifying turn. Chapter 4 Descent into Madness The drive back to Desolation Dunes was a blur. Amelia gripped the steering wheel, her knuckles white, the unsettling images from the burial site seared into her mind. The obsidian disc lay on the passenger seat, radiating a cold, malevolent energy that seemed to seep into her very bones. Back in her dingy room at the inn, she tried to make sense of what she'd experienced. The symbols on the disc seemed to writhe and shift under the flickering candlelight, defying her attempts to decipher them. Exhaustion tugged at her, but sleep offered no solace. Nightmares plagued her. Vivid reenactments of the ritual she'd witnessed. The screams echoing in her ears long after she woke with a jolt. Heart hammering in her chest. Days bled into nights. The scorching desert sun mirroring the feverish heat consuming her. The townsfolk, once wary, now looked at her with a mixture of fear and pity. Their averted gazes and nervous whispers fueled a growing paranoia within her. The once mundane sounds of the saloon doors, creaking, or the wind whistling through the cracked window, now sent shivers down her spine. Desperate for answers, Amelia sought out Sheriff Walker. She found him in his office, a cramped space cluttered with dusty files and a faded map pinned to the wall. Hesitantly, she recounted her experience at the Whispering Sands, the horrifying vision, and the chilling touch of the obsidian disc. The sheriff listened intently, his weathered face creased with a mixture of sadness and apprehension. When she finished, a heavy silence settled between them. Finally, he spoke, his voice low and heavy. I warned you, Doc, he said. Some things ain't meant to be disturbed. He proceeded to reveal the town's dark history. A brutal massacre centuries ago. Its victims, a peaceful tribe driven from their ancestral lands by greedy settlers. The Whispering Sands, he explained, was a sacred burial ground, a place of immense power and untold sorrow. Amelia felt a cold dread settle in her gut. The vision from the disc wasn't a random nightmare. It was a memory, a glimpse into a horrifying past. The artifact, she realized, wasn't just powerful. It was a conduit, a doorway to something ancient and malevolent. The sheriff's words, however, did little to calm the storm brewing within her. The whispers had become a constant presence, voices echoing in the dead of night, shadows seeming to writhe in the corner of her vision. Was it the artifact's influence? Or was the harsh desert finally getting to her? The lines between reality and nightmare began to blur. One night, she awoke to a sight that sent a scream ripping through the stale air of her room. The symbols on the disc, once static, were now pulsating with an eerie light. As she stared, mesmerized by the hypnotic glow, the room began to spin. The walls seemed to melt away, replaced by a scene from her nightmares, the sacred ground of the whispering sands, the chanting figures, and the blood-curdling screams. Amelia scrambled back, the disc clattering to the floor. The vision flickered and faded, leaving her trembling and gasping for breath. Her reflection in the cracked mirror confirmed her worst fears. Her eyes were wide and bloodshot. A wild look contorting her features. In that moment, a chilling realization dawned on her. 
The artifact was not just revealing the past, it was twisting her mind, pulling her deeper into its dark embrace. Amelia, the renowned anthropologist, the woman of logic and reason, wasn't so sure anymore. Fear gnawed at her, a relentless hunger that threatened to consume her. She had sought knowledge, but the price she was paying might be her sanity. As the whispers filled the room once more, she knew she had to find a way to break the disc's hold on her mind, or she might not escape the clutches of the dark entity it awakened. Chapter 5 The Secrets of Elder Crow The whispers haunted Amelia's waking hours, a constant insidious hum that chipped away at her sanity. The obsidian disc lay on the floor, its once smooth surface now pulsing with an unsettling inner light. Fear had taken root, a cold, clammy hand squeezing her heart. She knew she couldn't stay in that room, not with that cursed object exerting its malevolent influence. Driven by a desperate hope, Amelia plunged back into her research. She scoured dusty library archives and pored over faded town records, searching for anything related to the artifact or the massacre at the Whispering Sands. Days blurred into nights, fueled by stale coffee and a gnawing sense of urgency. Finally, a breakthrough. A single, cryptic entry in the town ledger mentioned Elder Silas Crow, a hermit rumored to possess knowledge of the town's forgotten past. Hope flickered within Amelia. This could be the key to unraveling the artifact's secrets and breaking free from its hold. The journey to Elder Crow's cabin was an arduous one. It lay nestled deep within the desolate reaches beyond desolation dunes, accessible only by a treacherous, unmarked trail. The relentless sun beat down, and the wind howled like a banshee, carrying whispers that seemed to echo Amelia's own tormented thoughts. After hours of navigating the unforgiving terrain, she finally stumbled upon a ramshackle cabin nestled amongst the gnarled arms of ancient Joshua trees. Smoke curled from its chimney, the only sign of life in this desolate wasteland. Taking a deep breath, Amelia pushed open the creaking door. The cabin was a cluttered haven of dusty books and forgotten trinkets. An old man sat hunched over a crackling fire, his face obscured by the flickering flames. He turned slowly, revealing weathered features etched with the wisdom of a life lived on the fringes. His eyes, the color of faded denim, held a depth that seemed to pierce Amelia's soul. Dr. Vance, I presume, he rasped, his voice a dry whisper. I've been expecting you. Amelia's breath hitched. How could he know her name? Before she could question him, the elder gestured towards the disc clutched in her trembling hand. His gaze locked onto it, a flicker of recognition passing through his ancient eyes. So, you've unearthed the Whispering Stone, he said, his voice laced with a mixture of dread and resignation. Relief and apprehension warred within Amelia. Finally, someone who understood the artifact's power, but his words sent a shiver down her spine. The Whispering Stone, an ominous name that mirrored the voices tormenting her mind. As she explained her experiences, the nightmares, the visions, the descent in madness, the Elder listened intently. When she finished, a heavy silence settled in the cabin. Finally, he spoke, his voice low and grave. That artifact, Dr. Vance, is more than just a relic. It's a conduit a gateway to an ancient evil that slumbered beneath the whispering sands. Those settlers who massacred the tribe unleashed a darkness they couldn't contain. The stone holds its essence, a whispering promise of power that can corrupt even the strongest of minds. The revelation hit Amelia like a physical blow. This wasn't just about history, it was a fight for her own sanity. The Elder then revealed a shocking truth. He wasn't just a recluse. He was a descendant of the massacred tribe, a keeper of their secrets. 
He had spent his life guarding against the stone's return, fearing the day it would resurface and unleash the horrors it contained. You must return it, Dr. Vance, the elder pleaded, his voice urgent. Take it back to the Whispering Sands, complete the ritual it demands. Only then can the gateway be closed and the evil contained. Returning the disc meant venturing back to the place that fueled her nightmares. But the alternative succumbing to the whispers and unleashing untold horrors was a far more terrifying prospect. With a newfound resolve, Amelia gripped the disc tightly. It thrummed with an even greater intensity, as if sensing her defiance. The battle for her sanity, it seemed, had only just begun. Chapter 6 Secrets and Suspicion Elder Crow's words hung heavy in the air, a chilling truth that sent a tremor through Amelia. The Whispering Stone, a name that perfectly described the constant hum of voices gnawing at her sanity. The burden of choice weighed heavily on her. Returning the artifact meant facing the source of her nightmares, but not doing so could unleash a darkness that threatened to engulf everything. Leaving the cabin, Amelia stepped back into the unforgiving desert sunlight. The familiar desolation now echoed the emptiness within her. The Elder's words about the ritual fueled a flicker of hope, a desperate plan to stop the horror before it consumed her. Yet, a part of her mind whispered doubts. Could she trust this enigmatic figure, this alleged descendant of the massacred tribe? The long journey back to Desolation Dunes was shrouded in a tense silence. The disc pulsed with an unsettling warmth in her hand, a constant reminder of the darkness it contained. As she entered the dusty town, a sense of unease settled in her gut. The townspeople seemed different. Whispers followed her down the deserted street, their glances filled with a mixture of fear and accusation. Sheriff Walker was waiting for her at the saloon, his weathered face etched with worry. There you are, Doc, he said, his voice gruff. Where the hell have you been? Amelia explained her visit to Elder Crow, carefully omitting the details about the artifact and its power. The sheriff listened intently, a frown creasing his brow. That old man, he said, his voice low. He's nothing but trouble. Always has been. Frustration bubbled within Amelia. He helped me understand this place more than anyone in this town, she retorted. What about you, Sheriff? Why all the secrecy? Don't you want to know what I found out there? The Sheriff hesitated, then sighed. He revealed that there had been a series of bizarre animal deaths. Ever since Amelia's arrival, livestock found ripped apart, their bodies devoid of blood. The townsfolk, superstitious by nature, were whispering about curses and dark magic. Amelia's blood ran cold. Could the deaths be linked to the artifact? Was unleashing the darkness already afoot? She desperately wanted to confide in the sheriff, to reveal the truth about the stone and the impending danger. But the elder's warning about keeping the artifact a secret echoed in her mind. A tense silence stretched between them. Amelia, haunted by the whispers in her head and the growing unease in the town, knew she couldn't maintain this charade for long. Sheriff Walker, suspicious of her secretive behavior and worried about the town's safety, was clearly on the verge of taking matters into his own hands. The lines between friend and foe were blurring, just like the lines between reality and the nightmare the artifact threatened to unleash. The fight for her sanity and the fate of Desolation Dunes was about to reach a boiling point. Chapter 7 Unveiling the Horror Desolation Dunes crackled with a tension thicker than the desert heat. Amelia couldn't shake the sheriff's words about the animal deaths, a chilling premonition settling in her gut. The artifact, the whispering stone, pulsed with a feverish energy, its secrets burning in her hand. Back in her room, she spread out the faded map from the sheriff and Elder Crow's cryptic notes. The symbols on the disc seemed to echo the markings on the map, 
a language both ancient and alien. Hours bled into night as Amelia toiled under the flickering candlelight, fueled by a desperate hope to decipher the ritual needed to contain the evil. The townsfolk, once wary, were now openly hostile. They followed her with accusing glances, muttering about a curse and a pale woman bringing darkness. This growing fear only intensified Amelia's resolve. She had to stop the whispers in her head, and that meant stopping whatever the artifact was channeling. Finally, a breakthrough. The symbols aligned, revealing a sequence of ritualistic acts, chants, offerings, and the placement of the stone at the center of a specific constellation visible only on that very night. A sliver of hope pierced through the suffocating dread. Tonight was the night. With a racing heart, Amelia packed her supplies in the stone, the weight of the artifact heavier than ever. Ignoring the ominous whispers in her head, she climbed into her car and raced towards the desolate expanse of the whispering sands. Reaching the burial site, a chill wind whipped through the canyons, carrying a faint, guttural chanting on the breeze. Amelia climbed the jagged rocks, the full moon casting an eerie glow on the ancient stones. Following the map's instructions, she arranged stones in a specific pattern, the air crackling with an unseen energy. As the constellations aligned overhead, Amelia took a deep breath and began the chant, the elder's words echoing in her mind. Her voice trembled against the howling wind, the syllables foreign and powerful. As she chanted, the ground trembled, a low rumble vibrating through the earth. The air grew thick and oppressive, charged with an unseen malice. Suddenly, the circle of stones erupted in a blinding light. The ground beneath her feet gave way, and Amelia tumbled through a swirling vortex of darkness. When the world solidified around her, she found herself in a desolate wasteland bathed in an unnatural, sickly green light. Grotesque, misshapen figures shifted in the shadows, their guttural growls sending chills down her spine. Panic clawed at Amelia. She had unlocked a doorway to another dimension, a realm of pure darkness and malevolent entities. But before she could even comprehend the horror she'd unleashed, a commotion erupted at the edge of the vortex. The townsfolk, drawn by the unearthly light and the terrifying tremor, had arrived. They stared in awestruck horror at Amelia and the nightmare she'd brought upon them. Sheriff Walker, his face etched with a mixture of fear and fury, stood at the forefront, his hand instinctively reaching for the gun holstered on his hip. Amelia, trapped between the terrified townspeople and the unleashed evil, felt a wave of despair wash over her. She had sought knowledge, but her quest had opened a doorway to unimaginable horrors. Now, she had to find a way to shut it, to contain the darkness before it consumed them all. Chapter 8 Breathless A cacophony of terror erupted as the nightmarish creatures surged towards the vortex's edge, their guttural roars echoing through the desolate wasteland. Panic gripped the townsfolk, their initial shock dissolving into a desperate scramble for survival. Sheriff Walker, ever the protector, roared at them to stay back, his voice a beacon of hope amidst the chaos. Amelia, however, was frozen in place. The sight of the unleashed horrors fueled the whispers in her head, a terrifying symphony of despair and malevolent urges. But through the haze of terror, a spark of clarity flickered. This was her doing, her responsibility. She lunged for the stone, pulsing with a malevolent light at her feet. As she grasped it, the whispers intensified, a chilling promise of power in exchange for her surrender. With a deep breath, she forced the darkness back. This wasn't about her. It was about protecting the town, the innocent people caught in the crossfire of her quest for knowledge. Drawing upon the knowledge gleaned from Elder Crow's cryptic notes, Amelia began a new chant, 
the syllables filled with a newfound power. As her voice rose above the guttural growls, the stone glowed with an ethereal light, pushing back the darkness that seeped through the vortex. The fight was brutal. The entity, enraged by Amelia's defiance, lashed out with tendrils of pure malice, draining her strength with each passing moment. The sheriff and the townsfolk, witnessing her struggle, found their own courage. With makeshift weapons and a newfound sense of unity, they formed a barrier, holding back the tide of creatures that swarmed at the vortex edge. The air crackled with raw energy. The struggle seemed to hang in the balance, neither side willing to yield. Finally, in a desperate act, Amelia channeled all her remaining strength into the chant. The stone responded with a blinding flash, its light pushing back the darkness in a violent surge. The entity shrieked, a sound that tore at the very fabric of reality, before being yanked back through the vortex with a sickening snap. The light subsided, leaving behind an eerie silence. The vortex was gone, replaced by the desolate landscape of the whispering sands, bathed in the soft glow of the moon. Amelia collapsed onto the sand, drained and trembling. The townsfolk, battered but alive, surrounded her with a mixture of fear and gratitude. The sheriff knelt beside her, his weathered face etched with exhaustion and something akin to awe. You, you did it, Doc, he rasped. Amelia could only nod weakly. She had contained the entity, but at what cost? The artifact lay inert at her side, its previous malevolent energy replaced by a chilling emptiness. A small part of her wondered if it still held a faint echo of the darkness she'd banished, a dormant threat waiting to be reawakened. The journey back to Desolation Dunes was a somber one. The weight of the experience lay heavy on everyone's shoulders. The townsfolk went about their lives with a newfound wariness. The whispers of the pale woman and the unleashed horror forever etched in their memories. Amelia stayed on for a while, helping the town rebuild and heal. But a part of her knew she could never truly outrun the whispers in her head, the chilling memories of the unveiled nightmare. Leaving desolation dunes behind, she knew the darkness might be dormant, but it wasn't gone. And somewhere, deep within the desert sands, the whispering stone lay silent, a constant reminder of the price she paid for knowledge and the consequences of disturbing the past.